and welcome. Because now we're live on YouTube for the second episode. Yo, yo, yo. yo. <laughs> I'm on Twitch. Maybe What's YouTube. up, guys? We don't really You're know. On Twitch? Oh, no. Wow. We dropped the ball. 10 yard line. Not even. Um, we not didn't even, catch the ball. Not even. We didn't get the ball from the punt yet. <laughs> I don't even Welcome. have my chat open. This is terrible. Oh, no. it's, it's, oh, it's God. the worst streamers ever. Nobody's allowed to talk to me. Oh. Uh, you know what, guys? I, I just don't. I don't think this is going. Good. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got to go. I got to get, get out of here. Where's Tony? Uh, we need Tony. We need. Oh yeah, we need. We need a. We need a Tony. Did you just? Whoa. Did you just threaten to replace me with my <laughs> uncle? <laughs> you disgusting uh, degenerates! I, uh, I believe we did. I believe we no. did. Absolutely. I haven't, I haven't been unable to tell who was talking when I was editing the videos of the three of us playing before. That hasn't happened Sir. on many Sir. occasions. Oh. I, dude, Sir. it is BS. You guys will literally have the exact same, like, phrase. Like, you know, like one mm -hmm. of those things that people will repeat. When mm -hmm. y'all repeat it, you say it the exact same way. And then I'm like... Shit! Wait, wait say, an, say an example. Like what? What? What kind of phrase? I bastard. <laughs> yes, that one. They will both say that exactly the same. And then I'm like, wait a second. Wait, <sighs> who, who do I give you subtitles have for? Have to, you <sighs> have to understand. My uncle is just my estranged, cooler, older brother that mm -hmm. I have modeled all of my interests off of and now have <laughs> offshot into a different branch in the timeline that is our shared existence. So it's fine. It's fine. It's not creepy. Yeah, y'all y'all are that guy. What is it? Mm -hmm. What is he? Y'all are that guy. Yeah, that guy. The guy. I, the, guy. the guy. I don't you know who the, the guy is. The but... guy in the Marvel universe. He's the, Legion? The knower. He knows everything. Oh, oh, the knower, the guy with the, the big um, old like, what's his name? baby. What's his name? He's in Loki, right? Yes. He, yeah, 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 yeah. He's the, yeah. the observer. What is it? Yeah, the, the observer. observer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. that's you guys. Y'all are both two iterations of him in the same universe. <laughs> Wait, are you or are you talking <laughs> about <laughs> Kang? No, not Kang. It's you know, the observer. Is, I think. is Kang the equivalent? He's the guy that's a normal human being that figured out. Oh, that's Kang. That's, that's Kang. Kang. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. that one's Kang. Kang, Kang the Conqueror. Bad. Kang is bad. But there yeah. are good Kangs. There, there well, are good... Well, <laughs> right? You're a good Kang. <laughs> so, one thing I, to say, we'll, we'll quickly touch on this before we get into the actual <laughs> intro to the oh, show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was really excited for the Kang the Conqueror arc with uh, John, Jonathan Masters. But... Ugh. It's just unfortunate that that IP is pretty much dead. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. Through through no like through no uh, bad efforts on the studio. It's just it was such a cool idea. I feel like Ant Man didn't exactly like fully introduce the idea of Kang and Who's like how Ant Man in the second one in uh, Multiverse Mania or whatever. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. But um. He was introduced as the main villain there, and like, I felt like he was trivialized oh. in the sh in the in the movie. And I was like, "No, Kang's like." To be fair, they I feel like they've dropped the ball on all of the post. Yeah, you know, all the post uh, Thanos, all the th no, post Thanos villains no, no, or yeah. characters. Loki's been great. Lo Loki, okay, okay. but here's mm, the thing. Here's the thing that I have to say. Yeah, Loki in a vacuum is great. But yeah. when you start trying to connect that into a overarching story, yeah, just that, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> like, but that's what the original phase That's what it's supposed did. to be. That's why yeah. they were so special. Yeah. That's why Marvel made it big. And now they're just kind of like throwing stuff in the wall. And sure, there are moments and things that are good, like Loki, but, it's... but they're missing the thing that made Marvel special from the original. Like the original phases, you know? they 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 drank too much of their Kool Aid and didn't realize that they needed to dehomogenize what they were imbibing. Yeah, yeah, they were just basically there was nobody for them to like ape off of or like at least iterate after for such a long time, and then it was the one formula that sells. Like everybody is Tony Stark. Yeah. Everybody I, is Tony Stark. 
I feel like it's a little bit of luck too in the cast that they chose and how they carry oh, the for sure. original like phases. For sure. And they have yet like they didn't replace them with a cast that is doing the same thing. No, you don't I, have a Robert Downey Jr. You don't have a who played Captain America. Um, uh, Chris, Chris um, uh, Evans. Chris Evans. You don't have a Chris Hemsworth. Well, you I mean you still have Chris Hemsworth for Thor, I guess. But like, eh, whatever. Yeah. And then uh, what was a big one? Mark Ruffalo as the Hulk. Oh. Yeah. I mean, and then you you had something so special that they tried mm-hmm. to do in these first phases. And now what I feel like is they're taking another group of actors and they're trying to recreate the that, magic, it, that magic, mm-hmm. but that magic only worked with that group, right? It worked because of how well they m- mingled together on screen and to try and recreate that is so, so difficult. And they just have not. Well, you also just need a break. Like it's, very obvious in the history of cinema that there are phases you yeah, know like 100%. there was apocalyptic phase not too long ago zombie phases uh there was another phase that we brought up the other day that i slips my mind but it was we're just like oh yeah we haven't really seen something like that in a long time now that's crazy and they extended the superhero phase in culture for a very long time and once that was over it was like okay take a break (laughs) like the the world is ready for something else basically Um, i feel like they were on the the uh, 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 like the right track to a little bit when they started doing things with loki and moon knight and kind of branching off and wandavision was really good too in my opinion i really liked wandavision yeah I feel that like they had these and ideas. Interesting. Yeah, 100%. And they had these ideas that they were building around these separate genres that honestly were, they weren't really superhero shows in a lot of ways. Right? Yeah, it was like, like a splash of super. Exactly. Which and was I, good because people were like, let's simmer down. Yeah. And I felt like that those were the right things. They just needed to connect. Like, I feel like. They needed that those different styles. They needed to branch into these different I- ideas, but they needed to sprinkle in the Marvel secret sauce, which is connecting them behind the scenes in a fun, interesting new way. And I feel like that's where they dropped the ball because they tried to make that king and they mm. tried to make that this Marvel cinematic do the exact same thing that we did with Thanos. And that wasn't how they should have done it. They should have leaned into these interesting branches that were different genres almost and kept doing new interesting things and then come back in the next future phases with some absolute wild off the wall superhero stuff, maybe with bringing in X-Men. Mm-hmm. Now like, that they have, yeah, the now they have the, the last IP. <sighs> Right. What a ball drop yeah, to like yeah, yeah. have that IP just, now and then heard just the not be able to swing for it. Yeah. What the Wolverine uh, controversy? Are his arms real? Oh yes. Which, what? Yeah, or are I they CGI seen. arms? And we 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 don't. <laughs> it, it, yeah, dude. Apparently, I don't like let Hugh Jackman just live, dude. dude. I, apparently, people were like, "Oh my god, gross! He has sleeves. Like Wolverine doesn't have sleeves. Why does he have sleeves?" Bro. And then. Another trailer comes out and there's no sleeves, and people are like, "Is that CGI?" That was on? fast. Yeah, <laughs> that was fast. Yeah. Oh it's no! Nuts. Leave that man alone. Like, I don't know if any like listeners, if you, I'm guessing you're nerdy enough, but like, if you don't already know that Hugh Jackman literally like tore himself apart for those movies, like going up all the way to Logan. Like he was like, oh. I, I I will never do these movies ever again because of the tribute, the wear and tear training. on my body. Like you can't you can't get that ripped that <laughs> on and off that many times. Ugh. Love him though. Ugh. Love that dude. Yeah. And you can okay. actually see it. He published yeah. his diet and workout for what he did and how it's, he did it. 
I would not. See, the thing, <laughs> the thing is, I I thought it was cool that he has sleeves because Deadpool has sleeves. Mm-hmm. They both have sleeves. Also, Symmetry. how old is Hugh Jackman? <laughs> he's like 40, Don't, what? 40. No way. He's, nah, he's 50 something? Dude, Hugh At Jackman least. is older than. Is he 60 something? That He's 55, man. 55. He's Holy, an old man, dude. Like, dude. That man is looking he looks good great for 55. He's looking Let's good for 55. Holy yeah. crap. He's killing it. Like that, and it, isn't it, he? Uh, isn't he going to be doing like the other wolf, like the old man, old man Wolverine movie too? Like, isn't he in there? I don't because because it, it's because it's this one like where he's in Deadpool, but there's he's all, has another old man Logan. I don't think he's confirmed that yet. Oh, uh, okay. Not loading. Huh. Okay, good to know. Guys, um, we're on a podcast about ranking. Yeah, <laughs> games, fun. Let's let's go. How's your sweet then? I think I think that wants to drink first, man. Oh, oh no, dude! I'm oh, no. I'm fresh off a of workout, so my brain is like awake. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, my dog uh, made a new boyfriend, and her boyfriend nice. is a Great Pyrenees that is gigantic. Oh, for a second, I thought you were talking about Deku. I was like, Deku got to get off. What, oh, dude? God. Dude, Gross. no. So this Great Pyrenees came by the other day, and it is huge. Huge. It's only one years old. They get they get Mossy fig. Dude, it's they a gr- it's the word that it's great in yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, they're like a proper cattle herding like dog. They're like they get as big as the cows almost. I think they get bigger than wolves ever have gotten. Like it's nuts. Oh, they're huge. Really? I used to, I used to know a couple. They they moved away, but they used to play volleyball with me. They actually were in the Great Pyrenees Society. They they were like you have to be in a society or something for like that, that for right. Atlanta. And so they would go out and do a lot of the events. And they had two great Pyrenees that they would oftentimes bring bring around. They were like huge snugglers. But I mm. kid you not, this dog was taller than me when it would come up on my shoulders. Yeah, yeah. dude. Dude, this like, this dog was huge. 1 years old and it jumped up at me and was like, "I'm as tall as you." And I'm like, "I know." <laughs> <laughs> it's like big, your face is where my face is at. They're big. <laughs> this dog was so cuddly. Like, uh, so now we have a friendly neighborhood dog watch. Um, I love that this dog's name is Griff, short for Griff. Oh, Boy. that's adorable. Oh, that's yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And so he he keeps coming around, sniffing around, looking for Yui because she ran off with him the other day. Mm. Uh, so that's how I met him and his owner. And um, man, that was fun. But uh. Yeah, I, I grabbed him out of our yard like a night or two ago at like nine o'clock at night. I'm walking him home and then he will just like stop and sit on my feet and just want huge pets, you know? Dang, that's a good pupper. He's insane. It's what's crazy to me is like we have a pretty long driveway now. Yeah. And when he runs down it, it's like five steps. Yeah, dude. It, it's it's weird. He's traveling really fast, but really, he looks really slow at the same time. It's it's, weird, there's trippy. a there's a um, there's a like there's a saying for that, isn't there? Like a name for that like phenomenon where like large objects are move slowly, but also cover more more uh, distance. Dude, or is that just physics? No, I think you're right. But like, it kind of gave me this weird, uncanny feeling of like. Is this what it would be like if a bear was running at me? Yes, it is 100% what it would be like if a bear was running at you, except it would be faster because they are... and bigger. And bigger. (laughs) And I'm just like, oh, I I guess I could see why some people just freeze up. (laughs) Yeah, man. You can't compute. You're like, what the fuck? 500 pounds is going 40 miles an hour at me. It shouldn't move that fast. In your head, it shouldn't move that fast because you're not exposed to it. It's the same thing with uh, alligators. Whenever, like, if they're just, like, hanging out and they rush you, your brain can't comprehend how fast that uh, a lizard that big yeah. is covering that much ground that yeah. fast. Yeah, like, they like don't, thing- you can't capture that on, on Animal Planet. I'm sorry. It's like that thing that people say where if people are wa- looking at like aliens, like they're looking at a proper UFO that exists that they might not actually be able to see it or comprehend it because their brain can't like, you can't see it. Does that make sense? Like I, I I've heard that of makes that. Sense. Well, that's why what, um, who was it? One of the, one of the physicist guys was talking about, it. I can't remember if it was Neil deGrasse Tyson or the, um, the Japanese, Probably Neil. 
guy. Uh huh. But he was talking about how his favorite alien movie is actually The Blob because it's the only alien movie that goes out and says they would be something so different and so weird and so out there in comparison to what we could conceive most likely. Dude, I had a thought about this just the other day. So, like, I live somewhere where people often talk about, like, there being, like, fairies and, and like... Skinwalkers. Like, yeah, or, like, the... What do you call it? So, like, the Appalachian Mountains are huge, right? They're the oldest mountains in existence. They existed before trees existed. They existed before mammals walked the Earth. They existed before Saturn had rings. Whoa. These mountains have been around for a long time. And so, you know, I, I just, for some reason, popped in my head. If fairies or whatever n garden gnomes, like, actually exist, if they have never harmed a human, if they have, like... If they look so different and they've never harmed a human, maybe we never evolved to be able to see them. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's covered in Artemis Fowl. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It like, oh, seems gosh, like it a... could be real. Yeah, throwback. I, I haven't read that. I don't know what that yeah. is. Uh, so Artemis Fowl is a um, children's book that's based around the idea that there's this uh, younger... Uh, son of a family known as a crime syndicate and he inherits the name and the company and he uses it to blackmail the world of fairies into funding the, his rise back into power. Whoa. Like the first, the first book is actually a banger because like the uh, it's called Leprechaun which is like the police force of the uh, mm. of the uh, fairy Disney world thing. D don't watch the movie. Oh, 2020. <laughs> I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I'm pretty sure it's, it's been removed from wherever oh, you can oh access God, it. Really? But but the books are really good. Books. Okay. The first three, first three are good. The last one, you're like, what? What's happening? I think actually no. The the opal. The Opal Deception or something like that. Mm -hmm. That one is good because it gets dark and you're like, oh, this is like, this is like real. <laughs> yeah, it's Dude. been such a long time since I read those books. I think I was in middle school. Yeah. When I read them. God, Ash says, what if Mothman is a fairy? No. Mothman is a fairy. No. What are you talking about? No. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah. Dude, all, all, all fantasy it's creatures are, you, are probably based in the the idea of fairy it's just that you have yeah. you have dark people and you have light and, and you have True. less mean people and you have dark fairy and you have nicer fairy so Same like i feel like i have seen at least several uh different pieces of work where they're like oh the fairy or the ghost or whatever it is just suddenly shows itself to you when usually mm -hmm. you can't see it and so mm -hmm. like when it shows itself to you, does that mean it's now like a threat in order for you to see it? <laughs> like it can mm -hmm. hurt you now? Is that how they make you see them? I feel like this is a rabbit hole I'm not willing to fall down. <laughs> I feel like I at least need to drink before. We I think I need to drink through. before that. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, All right, we drink, what are we drinking, yeah. Eric? <laughs> so today, today we have a, a, a what I not think. wait before we go in, not to cut you off, Anthony, because that oh, is no, an no. interesting topic. I feel like we just need to have alcohol in our bodies before we start talk, going down this. Hole. I mean, I'm already benchmarking it. So, sir, say, I'm he not. Was, he was drinking well. <laughs> no, before. no, my benchmark. I have my benchmark. Oh man, where's my Long Branch? Oh. I, I I always have my benchmark ready to go now. Like wow. I'm just. <laughs> Dude, the long branch. I haven't even touched it since the last podcast. I'm so stoked. Oh, man. Oh. So so this one will actually be what I think will be a a pretty fun one. I'm actually pretty excited for this one. I'm I excited, have... but I don't know anything about it except for it says 50% ABV. And I'm so like, you, you will actually love I've this. Seen so out of here. <laughs> today, we are doing the Frey Ranch Bottled in Bond Rye. Ooh, I do so this like is the next rye. one in the Flaviar experience that we have, the lost art of distillation. Now, Frey Ranch is really cool. They're in Nevada uh, Whiskey Company. They were farmers first. So this is a long line of farmers. They, they own Frey Ranch. 
And one of these sons, or they've been there for like five generations or something like that. And one of the sons really enjoyed whiskey and they were already growing all of this stuff to make whiskey. And so all of their ingredients, as I understand it, or at least some of their main ingredients are all harvested from their own farm in Nevada. And they have a large, uh, like four main whiskeys that they do. And this is the rye whiskey. Um, I've had some of their other products. I'm really excited to try this one. I have not tried this one. And so... So did we all order one of their other ones? We did. Is that what we ordered? That's going to be ideally here by the next episode, if we're lucky. Oh, is that the bottle and bond that we bought from Steelbox? Steelbox? So we might have a two-parter with the Furry Ranch series. So we'll, we'll explore some of their other stuff. But... I, I'm excited for their ne- next whiskey and this whiskey Interesting. also. Interesting. Interesting. And it is it is really cool. Ooh, I think it's powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, 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 steam it like, is steam turbines powerful. Nose, you get the you get the rye and the wood right off the gate. Like I get a lot of rye, a lot of wood. Um, I can't find my bookie wookie, so somebody will have to quote. It's very what they fresh are. for me so far. Yeah. Yeah, I almost get like a. Um, oh, here you go, Nat. Here you go. I'll just. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Hold on. One oh, second. Hold my that, hold background. That hold that, that background. There. Thing hold that there. Yeah, hold, just, hold it. Hold it there. Yeah. Hold it there. Okay. That's not clear at all, is it? Oh wow, the bottle looks almost exactly like the one that you showed it that uh, we bought from. Okay, yeah. I got it. So now th- here's another cool fact about this particular rye whiskey. It is made from a hundred percent winter cereal rye Ooh, anthony stop sharing your screen by the way oh yeah am i frozen your fro your board your boardman screen is is frozen the one that you're sharing of the wolverine deadpool screen yeah yeah, you can still see that yeah because i'm not sharing it oh weird i could still see it i don't know i think we had a lot of weird riverside bugging out because both of you like disconnected at one point yeah i'll try to share again okay it says someone else is currently sharing so i cannot Weird. Interesting. I Was it, is it you, Eric? It's not me. No. Someone else is currently sharing. Tight. Uh, Computer is haunted. Well, let's um, see. Oh wait, there's a stop sharing button at the top, though. Oh, oh it, it went. It went dark. I will say that I think maybe perchance Edge is not better than Chrome. <laughs> yeah. Because that know. was weird. I use we, to be Arc, fair. By we the way. did. We did fix the the main issue. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that we were having. So we might not have to use Edge. Probably. Anymore. But uh, anyway, so while we're, <laughs> while, while we're attempting he- to fix that on the side. So this is 100% rye. Now, you don't get a lot of rye whiskeys really? that do 100% rye. Which Does is rye affect my... the thickness? So rye is pretty, usually results in a pretty viscous liquid but it doesn't have to this one is extremely viscous this it's one very is oily. super thick yeah and How is it? you yeah. can yeah. smell a rye this is this is a rye well, this man. is a very fresh yeah. rye like a, a lot of ryes are overpowering this this is very smooth on the nose there's brown sugar in this caramel i could get that like or caramel little, or something yeah rose, caramel like definitely sugar caramel yeah this Ooh, is I beautiful. smell the raisins. I could get that too. Yeah, like this there's is a great. Light. I mean, it smells great. This smells. Oh, this is good. like what I want to do. By the way, like I, I, we live on a tiny farm. I want to just grow the right things to make a bourbon. <laughs> I mean, morning. you can. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be a way to do it. Honestly, you save a lot of money. Wow, that's. Can we drink this, please? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Episode twenty-two. <laughs> In the books, the friends. Mm. 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 Oh my god! Oh. I get that butteriness like immediately. Wow! Holy crap! Oh, oh. There's, more. there's more. But wait, there's oh, more. Oh, that's hot! Wow! Um, you made my skin crawl, guys. This is really good. It is really good, actually. This is a... That uh, was the first sip. Phenomenal rye. 
Yeah, that was just the palate cl- Holy crap. cleanser. I thought it was over, but now I'm getting like a bunch of caramel and vanilla. She comes back for more. Holy crap. Not many do that. I got to go, guys. I got to buy this <laughs> bottle. Yeah. yeah. Holy. Go back to seal box. Hey, there's that there's that coupon that I used today for twenty dollars off. Fun little coupon. facts. Yeah. This particular rye won double gold at the <sighs> World Spirits competition. It won gold at the and that was in 2021, it looks like. They also won the single gold and they got the Century Award a hundred points. Mm. So did y'all did y'all know that Breakdancing is a new sport in the Olympics. I did not. Was it so each? I do know that each country like, that hosts gets to put a sport into the Olympics for so, the year that they host it. So and France it added breakdancing. Now that I don't know, I was about to ask that. Do we know? Yeah. I, I don't know. Added that? I don't know. I just feel like at this point, with the some of the crazy sports we have in there, that just like crafting bourbon should be admitted into the. Anthony, into the it's, a, it's Anthony. It's 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 basically the same. Anthony, <laughs> <laughs> Eric, continue with your facts. <laughs> it's a physical. It's physically demanding of the internal organs. For dude, that's drinking bourbon. The, not, the, not, the, the not guy that makes it out. The guy what? that picks the guy out that, the good one what? and gets you know the gold what? medal. You know what? <laughs> you let this man finish his, his facts. <laughs> And I will say this is a phenomenal rye. This is, is this is great. It's got this dark chocolatey note near like the middle to finish. It's really nice. It, it's got all of these darker flavors. It's got just enough of that rye pepper heat type of deal going on. Just Not enough, Eric. Yeah, it, it's just enough. This thing kicks. No, well, don't. <laughs> it doesn't do that rye. Kick. Yeah, it's like that, kicks you a, the asphalt. The yeah, yeah, yeah. That asp- yeah. It has this sweetness to it. It has these nice flavors. It burns, but it's fun at the same time. It's um, it is balanced. Very. That is very a really well balanced dry. I have not been drinking alcohol uh, bourbon long. That's that's Important. special. This is not a bourbon. This is a rye. Sorry, this, this I haven't been drinking be the, a rye whiskey. Well, two I haven't things. been drinking rye whiskey long. This is the first bottled in bond rye I remember having. Yeah, this is a bottled in bond mm. rye whiskey, which means it has to be aged at least four years. Right. Um, um, the the bottled in bond, I believe, has to do with the taxing. I believe it has to be a hundred proof exactly, if I remember. Yep, correctly. it has to be exactly 100 proof. It must be aged a minimum of four years okay. in a federally bonded warehouse. Yep. Bottled and bond part. Um, yeah, yeah. It has to have that label there's... over the top of it, right? Yeah, the tax stamp has, yeah. to, has to be there. It must be distilled from the same class of materials by the same distiller and at the same distillery during the same distilling season, which I presume just means it's not a mix. Yes. Yeah, it's not a blend. Mm-hmm. It can't be blended. It's all got to be from the same distillery. It must Isn't be stored in wooden containers. For a whiskey? Oh, no, no, stop. Not standard. always, because not a lot of whiskeys are blended, blended. from yeah. different bottles, from different years. That's how you so get the orphan that barrels. That this all came from... This could still be a blend, but it had it, to come from barrels that were done at the, started at the same time. Nope. It must right? be unaltered. Oh, the spirit must remain unaltered from its original condition, except for filtration, chill proofing, or other physical treatments. Mm. So just getting it out of the bottles, basically. So, ke- so physical, not chemical. So by blend, though, I think like it can be a blend of the same maybe barrel batch. Yeah, I don't not think a blend. it has to be a single barrel. It can't be a blend thinking. from multiple distilleries. Yes. But it can be a blend of different barrels within the same rickhouse, the the same rickhouse, same season. So it it, there there they can still blend it. Mm -hmm. The Um, last requirement is labeling. The label must tell you the name of the distillery, and if different, where it was bottled. 
And it must also include the unique distilled spirits plant number. And we do know that this isn't a single barrel because there would be no reason not to put single barrel on the label too if it was a single barrel. So this was likely blended to match a certain flavor profile that they're looking for from the barrels of that season. Wow. This is the best rye I've ever had. For sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, cool. what is For the sure. old Forster is my go-to rye because yeah. it's cheap and good. Well, yeah. this is really good. This yeah. is really good. It, it, this is a really phenomenal rye. Um, it has so much character. It, I, it has I feel like we have character. to. I feel like we have to skip to the rating piece because I don't think we have anything much that we need to say about this. Let's thing. go, Nat. You're first. <laughs> I'm first. Yeah, well, Eric, up, do you have, you, Eric, do you have anything else uh, to speak about on this well, one? I was just going to say, there's a lot of cool flavors. I think their flavor profile really uh, covers most of it. But I think there is a darkness, like a chocolatey flavor that they kind of note as cacao and caramel. Mm-hmm. That I think comes across to me more as a... Dark chocolate? A dark chocolate mm-hmm. towards the end. For sure. It is really, really nice. It, it really does feel like I'm doing a almost like a tasting of a rye with raisins, dark chocolate, all in one kind of deal. And I could see this as being like a cookie, man. Yeah, and it, the, yeah. it coats your mouth and it mm-hmm. stays there for a while. Like I'm mm-hmm. still getting a lot of that feeling well after putting the drink down. It kind of leaves that dark chocolate flavor with a little bit of raisins like in your mouth for a bit, which is that's, just really nice. That's definitely that viscosity, man. Like, yeah, it's very oily. Yeah. It coats your mouth a ton. And it's just overall really uh, pleasant. It is mm-hmm. just a pleasant rye. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I, I just wanted to speak a little bit more. Frey Ranch is doing wow, uh, like just some crazy cool stuff. Um, they're not in Kentucky, but like, don't put them down because of where they're For at. For sure, this Nevada company is. Uh, they're Nevada. doing Nevada. Yeah. Kicking ass and taking names for sure. Yep, and they're home growing all of their ingredients, which is just really cool. Wow. Um, Wow, I'm floored. Um, yeah, huge. I guess I'll. I guess I'll yeah. start. What do you What do you think about um, this whiskey? I was gonna try to sum it up, but I, I like yeah, go for it. What, what yeah. would you rate this? Uh, I haven't even really collected my thoughts on this thing. To be honest, I will say that this is at least a seven. At least a seven. At least a seven. Like mm-hmm. this is the this is by far the best rye that I've ever had. Okay. I don't I don't know the ceiling for rise. You know what I mean? Like I don't know I like this could be literally the highest it goes and I have to reapproach how um rise are and this could be like a 9 or an mm. 8. Okay. But let me be real though. We got to choose something. I know. I know. So I'm going to be I'm going to be um I'm going to be a little shy with my rating first and I'm going to start with 7. You're going to start at... I'm going to start with a seven. Because, like, dude, it's the best rye I've ever had. I will I will for sure be buying this bottle after this podcast. Like, full stop. It is the the gift that I will give at every single birthday party for the next year. To say that this is the best rye you've ever had and put it at a seven? Why? Yes. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Because I feel like okay, look. No, I want to know why no, 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 it's no, weird. No. I well, feel I the same way you do, Nat. If it's, yeah. if it's the yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'm wait, nervous wait. that like this is like this is beautiful, but I'm nervous that I'm going to be exposed to something absolutely world shaking, and I'm not going to be able to say that this is the same as that. Right? This is fantastic. I I have I have been in a situation where I have had alcohol that has rocked my freaking world. And I am open to that and I want that to be a possible future that I can forecast for. So to be 
fair with the rating of what is out there, and I know is possible with li- with liquor, I'm going to put this at a safe seven. If, however, we come back to the like today, next year, <laughs> and I have not been, and I have not been shooketh <laughs> like Shook. this, like this one right here, I will put this at a nine. Okay. Because it's because it's so good, it's so good. Like I, I can't even tell you flavors, guys. Okay. If you're okay. listening and you t- and you drink whiskey, get this. Oh yeah, it's a it's it's such an easy choice, so easy. Like Question. put it on your put it on your shelf. Is this the best thing Flaviar has done so far? Full stop. Easily. Full stop. Easily. Easily by a freaking mile, dude. Holy shit. Yeah. Let me finish this. Even mm. better than the Star Wars Solera, which was our mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. previous. Mm-hmm. Okay. Easily. So what, what would you pay for it, Nat? What what is your price tag for this whiskey? What is it called again? It's the uh the bottled in bond. Frey Ranch Rye. Frey Ranch Rye, bottled in bond. The, all of their rye is bottled in bond. So. All the rye is. Okay, yeah. is this their standard model? Yes, this is their base rye. Fuck. They, <laughs> they have... It only gets better! <laughs> they have a single barrel rye. Just putting it out there. I would... Pay, oh, man. Okay. This is a little bit of cheating because I, I already know that this is their base model, right? That being said, for what it's doing for me, I'm well. Oh, I'm so okay with paying like seventy five with this. Okay. Seventy five, sixty, sixty plus. I'll I'll buy it. Period. Honestly, no. Like, yeah, seventy five plus. I'll still buy it. Okay, Anthony, what what would you write this? All right. So funny thing is, like Nat basically articulated what happened to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I tried to get ahead of it, so I was going through all that in my head because sometimes y'all like surprise me, and I'm not ready. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, I gotta write the, I gotta figure this out. So like, oh my god, my initial thought was yeah, like seven, but then when I finally went to write it down, I wrote eight. I was like eight out of ten easily, and then mm. I started thinking about it and writing my notes down in the little booklet we got here, and I was like, this is like evolves. Both yeah. on the nose and on the tongue, it started buttery. Eventually, it had that amazing heat that was lingering and tingly. And then I was like, "Nah, man, this is a nine. So I scratched it out and I put a nine. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I was you put like, nine. This is a nine. This is easily a nine. Like it's, and I would easily pay like a hundred dollars for this. Like, yeah, yeah. I was just like, I don't know." Just the, it's just so it's just too good. It is so good, Anthony. I, I I'm gonna preface my rating and price with just one question. You might Here not it remember. Is. Here it is. But we tried two whiskeys at your house. We did a blind tasting between them. Both of those are the two ryes. That I would consider, in my opinion, much better than this rye. I don't know if you remember them well and enough to like compare them. I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I get to have such an exciting life. For yeah. sure. I'm constantly man. forgetting everything. So I'm constantly experiencing everything for the first time. It's the gold shift. It's the goldfish life for me. Yeah. The goldfish. So- <laughs> I'm gonna, Eric, uh, uh-huh. like there. There's so many interesting things I want to say oh, about this. Oh, before gonna... you get to that, I want to preface this by saying today I was in a terrible mood, so you would think I would give it a terrible rating. No, man, this supersedes <laughs> your feelings <laughs> for sure. Right, dude. For I mean, it, sure. this is man. There are so many interesting things. How do I, how do I say this? I'm just going to go ahead and give my rating and price because trying to hide them is making it difficult to say all the things that you I have want. to say that you have to, um, I, I rate this an eight. Easy. No shit. Yeah, this is, this, this is, is an eight. eight. Now nah, you gave it the With lowest. Everything that you nah, had, it's an eight. 
Yeah, uh, it's it, it, this is a phenomenal rye. I am a <laughs> rye lover. Ryes are some of my 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 top three of my top five whiskeys are rye. So wait, this say, is the summit. This is close to the summit. This is close to the summit, man. This is a <sighs> phenomenal rye. It is so flavorful. It has just the perfect amount of heat. There's a lot going for it. And here's what I'll say: for freaking sixty bucks, no shot. I of this one, so there were no surprises. For sixty bucks, man, this is hard to beat at sixty bucks. I don't Where's know. Where's my wallet? I don't know if there's another whiskey at the sixty dollar range that not, beats this one. Not just that. I'm kind of sad that I just bought the the uncut one for hopefully next week because. Yeah. They have the complete collection, oh, which includes shut up. the rye, the uncut, and their straight we, bourbon whiskey for one ninety. I think we have to try the single barrel rye too. We have to. Where do you see yeah. that? So you you have to go to the single barrel uh, part of their site, not the rye whiskey part of their site. So if you go, go to, to the single wine. barrel, you'll no. actually see that they have the oh, barrel strength bourbon, the single yeah. barrel bourbon, and the single barrel rye. FYI, I can no longer share screen for the rest of this uh, podcast episode. Yeah, I was, thinking, I was thinking maybe after the whiskey session, we'll re- we'll take a a, a little break a and quick, reconvene. Yeah, I think yeah. if I refresh the page, it might fix it. But yeah, I was going to try to show yeah. their website, but that's yeah, not yeah. Happening. Um, yeah, we'll fix that in just a second for the for the live viewers. But and uh, so there are rise better than this. Okay, I love the midwinter. Dram, one of my mm. favorite ryes. I love the Sazerac 18, also one of my favorite ryes, and I love the Thomas A. Chandy. Are they way better than this, in my opinion? Yes, I fully think those are way better. Mm. But this is amazing. And when you really start to look in that price range, you got to remember what you're, you're paying for pennies on the dollar. Are they way better? Yes. Are they $700 better? No. They're like... <laughs> I don't know. You got to you got to think about it. The Sazerac 18 it sometimes goes for over 2 grand guys, and some nonsense. Guys. The Thomas H Handy goes for 7 guys, 800. Guys, you can buy directly from them. Yeah, you can. This doesn't happen. <laughs> what's happening? What? Yeah. What's What's what happening this? to me? <laughs> what is so, this? Are we free ranch people? <laughs> uh, dude, I, <laughs> and I will say I am so excited to introduce you the one for next week, which is amazing. So excited. Oh, my God. So the, the, the furry ranch people are doing amazing work. I think we should just go through all of their stuff. And also, also them more because getting a shirt. God, I wish I could yeah. show the screen right now. Um, should I? Re- I refresh the page. We'll see if that f- breaks anything. It's not actually doing it. Yeah, I, I want to. Sh- I think we have to stop and refresh. Do you do you want Damn to purpose. reconvene and stop the recording? Real yeah, quick yeah, yeah. Real quick, quick pause. It? Real quick pause. Real quick pause. Yeah, let's refresh the stuff. Okay. Audience, we'll do be this? right back. Yeah. Yeah. Very weird. Mm. Nat, are you hearing me multiple times? I can't hear you multiple times. No, it's just Eric. Eric, check how many browsers you have open. Oh, very, very weird. Can you still hear me multiple times? Do you have the YouTube stream up? Do you have my Twitch stream up? I can literally see the buffer circle happening on Eric right now. Just oh, no. <laughs> Dude, Flaviar is so... What's the word? Not Flaviar. Riverside oh, is so... He's out again. Um, uh... Bipolar. <laughs> it doesn't like certain things. So, so for my stream, I have like this presenting uh, scene up, right? Which very much depends on the window being in the right layout. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when I share my screen with having changed nothing, it puts you guys on the bottom and me like we should be underneath mm-hmm. the shared screen. But sometimes it puts us to the right. And that just breaks everything. And I'm like, it just destroys everything. Why? Why? Why is it different? Why is it Why have you got to break everything? Why have you got to be a destroyer? Destroyer of worlds. Yeah. Destroyer of worlds. Hello, hello, Eric again. Eric. Are you there, Eric? 
Hello. Hello. Holy moly, guys. Hello. Hello. I can hear hello? you, Anthony. I can hear you, yeah. Anthony. Stop saying hello. Hello. Anthony. Hi. There we go. <laughs> okay. We should be back, hopefully. Do you ever watch All hockey? Right. Anthony. What? What else are we going to talk about? I just saw the Stanley Cup finals. It was great. Anthony! <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, we hear you. We just don't see you. I can see. Oh, him. that's that's okay. I it's definitely re- recording to the thing, so it should be okay. Okay, cool. okay, okay. So, Frey Ranch has some really attractive branding. That bottle mm-hmm. is gorgeous. The topper on the on the uh, cork is fantastic. The only thing I'm upset about is that they do not have a shirt, which is unfortunate, but it's okay. They That's probably fine. do at the distillery. Probably. You know, we just have to visit. I don't know Dude. where it's... Where are they? Well, so, I don't know if y'all pick Nevada. this up, mm. but the reason I wanted to show off the bottle is because it's just like a uh, silo. Straight. Mm. Yep. Perfect yeah. cylinder. It's got that ring around it right here, yeah. which the the silos usually have at least three rings. One would be around here where the label is because they're made of gigantic pieces of metal that aren't that wide, but they have to be put together. The glass on this is like super, mm-hmm. super enticing. But look, whoever designed their stuff, kudos. You got it. You freaking nailed it. It's so oh, yeah. good. So, um, yeah. I'm going to cancel my order from Sealbox on this uncut one because I'm probably going to just buy the complete collection because uh, well, Sealbox <laughs> up prices it by at least four bucks, I think. Yeah, I just I just don't see I don't it's see why I sh- why I shouldn't I don't see why I shouldn't because and they probably after make everything more money. after everything we've talked about with these people and Frey Ranch, if you ever see this. Your product is incredible. It's so good. And your branding, your message, your overall just flavor palette for all of your, um, well, for your single uh, whiskey that we've had so far, the rye, is immaculate. So I can only say kudos. Um, I wish I could change my rating, but it's already, oh, it's all ogre now. So. You're a seven, oh, yeah. If you didn't go first, you're a, you would have given him like a nine. For sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. For that sure. Is, if you... Oh. So um, the question is, is this a daily drinker? Is that Does this get the badge of being a daily drinker? And I will start. Fuck yes. Yeah. This is an easy ride. Easy drinker. cop. I, I think being able... Like, if... It, it, it is on the pricier side, I think, for a daily drinker, especially when you consider something like the Old Forester or something like that is $25, $30, right? So it's half the cost. But I think the amount of quality that you're getting for those extra $30 is such good value at this price point. Mm-hmm. And at $60, there just isn't a lot touching this. Nope. Like, it is just a great rye. Guys, I am canceling my order right now so that I may purchase the complete collection. Yeah. Um, It will go straight to the purveyor, which is great. That's what I want to do. Um, <laughs> also, I'm pretty <sighs> sure I, I it's definitely a deal because how much is the rye and the uh, straight bourbon ris- whiskey? Yeah. Right here, the it has sixty three fifty three. If you get the bundle, you get everything discounted by a fair amount, guys. I don't want to sound like a simp, but but buy the entire range, dude. I'm wondering if, if they're, they're sold out of the single barrels or something because I don't see a way to buy the single barrels. The only way uh, to do it is through the completed. Oh wait, mm. oh yeah, it's not on there. It's not listed. Yeah. Wait, did we order the single barrel then? No, we ordered the uncut. Yeah, no, uncut. I want the single barrel, baby. I, want well, I don't see barrel. a way to get it. 
It's probably sold out. We'll probably have to check Total Wine or something. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, listeners, if you can. Oh, it says coming soon on Sealbox sold out. There you go. Um, oh, man, it's so good. If you're wanting to get into bourbon and you want to be guaranteed to have like a full like gamut of the what the world of, bur- of whiskey can give you, get seriously consider the Frey Ranch branch. Yeah. Like if this is the the literal like beginning of their quality and it only goes up from here in terms of their straight bourbon or their uncut or their single barrel, I can only imagine that they're like incredible. So all the support that I could possibly give towards this brand keep on doing it. It's fantastic. People who are looking to go ahead and get started inside, inside of whiskey. You, you have your answer. Like just start. It's, it's right here. Oh, so good. And and if you're playing Stardew Valley, this will give you a plus one to farming easily. <laughs> easily. <laughs> well, I tell you farm. what. <laughs> Maybe plus five if you're lucky. Maybe a plus five. <laughs> it ranges. <laughs> Depends on how dehydrated you are. Oh my god. <laughs> Make sure to hydrate, boys. Oh, oh my gosh. Man. Okay. Well, Cool. That was, uh, what that was a, a good one. what a fantastic little Wait, spirit yeah. to finish off with. Like that was so good. Oh my god. Well, Speak, speaking of farming, um, Eric tried to tell our boss that I now have a herd of cattle. Nat, when someone tells you they have a herd of cattle, how many do you think that is? Like, how many? Do you a think herd is, is at least like ten plus, right? That's what I thought too. I was like, bro, you can't just tell people that. <laughs> You can't tell people that you you can't tell but, people that you have a herd of animals. <laughs> Eric Googled it. And Turns actually out. the number is very small. Two or more? <laughs> Three. Three. Really? So tomorrow morning I will have a herd of cattle. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. That was very close. Farmer Anthony. Yeah, that's nuts. Holy moly. The herder himself. <laughs> the herder himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, truly a wondrous creature. <laughs> if, if any of you haven't seen this, you've got to watch Clarkson's Farm. It is hosted by Jeremy Clarkson. He's the one of the main hosts on Top Gear, or he is the main host on Top Gear. He's the one that talks the most. You know what I mean? Mm, he's the mouthpiece. <laughs> yeah. And so he, in one of the episodes, he blew up his house. Well, that house was on the farm that he is now running. Oh my god. Called Clarkson's farm. And thanks to blowing up his house, the people in town don't really like him. Because they ca- he caused a lot of mayhem for them. So it's a very, very good show. And it can give you it's been it's been what's the word? Not exemplified, but it's been noted as like the best uh form of media whether it be a book or some sort of educational system that has ever. Oh, lost Anthony. Gone. I just canceled my order from Frey Ranch for the uncut. That's so. hilarious. Oh. But you're still going to get the uncut, right? I'm going to buy yeah. the full three. Yeah. Yo, Hopefully that was weird. The full Are you back? Collection at my local. I don't know. Yeah, you're back. back. Uh, Marco. Polo. Okay. Because Riverside did something weird there where you guys got fast forwarded for me. Interesting. So Eric suddenly spoke very quickly. Weird. I have, I have a feeling this, this, uh, this episode's going to be a nightmare to edit tomorrow. Oh, for sure. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. Uh, But you know what? It, It really, it works out so well. Like, Last time, last last episode, I was telling mm. Anthony this. Mm. It took me like five minutes to edit the whole thing because I have everything set up. So five, now that, yeah. Now that Anthony, when Ant, when me and Anthony got on and fixed the video issue, done. I mean, it was it was near instant. 
because That's I literally crazy. just had to like set up all the stuff. I have everything all set up in Premiere Pro already. So it was just drag and drop essentially. And it and then render. And it was so nice. Um but Sick. it looks like I'll make up that time tomorrow probably with uh, all the little things <laughs> we've had this episode. Which unfortunate, we'll but unfortunate. necessary. Necessary evil. So so Anthony, what have you what have you been playing this week? What have you been playing, dog? Dude, I've played several games. Oh, okay. um, I've played a very little bit of V Rising with Ash. Oh, um, on our PVE server, we started a new castle, which means there's just a new heart there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have two territories now, so that's fun. She's really excited to become a toad, so that'll be good. Can't wait to be toads. Um, <laughs> what I played something else. I I think I played a little bit of um. This happened last week too. What is it called? Snow Runner. I was very disappointed though because huh. in Snow Runner, I was like, "There's a North Carolina DS- D- DLC." Yes, cool. I I love the idea of playing a video game that gives you some real world education. And I was like, I want to drive around on the roads around here and get an understanding for them. Yeah. Okay. Well, apparently SnowRunners stopped doing realistic roads. They just make it up now. Oh, that's and I, weird. Yeah, it's just very disappointing. I'm like, I've is driven there, on some there... really crazy roads here. You didn't need to make them up. Is there a reason <laughs> they did that? Was it like to make it more interesting for, from their perspective? Or like... My guess is just d- dev and cost. Because like making it up is easier than going and scanning it or trying to make it one-to-one. Hmm. You know what okay. I mean? I'm guessing yeah. they're just trying... But that's, but that's all speculation. I don't I don't know the reason. I just Googled it. I was like, are these real roads? Because I looked up the town and it, I can't find the town. And hmm. so, I don't know. Like, that's just the thing that it was really cool when I was playing, like, Forza Horizon 4 and my wife comes over and she's like, wait, what are you doing? What? What are you playing? I've been there. And I was like, you've been there? She's like, yeah, when I went to England, we were... that. We go were up there. that street. There's the castle. We've I've been, been there. there. And I was like, that's cool. Like, that's a really cool aspect of a game based in reality. But now it's gone. Unfortunate. Yeah. Okay, so you've played... I played a game that I won't mention... Because if I mention it uh, too early, Eric's going to say a lot of things, and then I'll never play it again. Um, so I'll, I'll hold off on that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> leave the leave the suspense. I don't know if Eric, are you, can you hear us, Eric? Yeah. Do you see yeah, Eric DC? I can't see Eric. He's his camera's completely gone, but I can hear. Yeah. Him. I I can see that there I'm being is. recorded on Riverside. Anyway, he's good. Can y'all the, hear me? The coolest game uh-huh. that I've played. Did I mention last week? Played up. No. You gotta play played up. You played over not over overcooked. I played overcooked. Played up is a roguelike overcooked. <laughs> yes. What? It is it so dope. much more challenging. It's on Steam? It's on Steam. It's even on sale on PS5. Oh. Yes. Dude. What's it, it called again? Plate up. Plate up. Yes. Interesting. I honestly wonder if we would ever want to try to play it together with the couch co-op Steam thing, remote play. Mm, yeah. Oh, that the, the remote play. He, he is the bat signal has been posted. Oh no! Or has uh, it? Um, He's not. The sure. remote play has gotten better and better <laughs> as time has gone on, so it might be like Ending. good enough. Eric's back. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yes, we're dead. Can, can you hear me? We hear, I hear you now. Rogue oh, Could you not hear me before? I couldn't. Oh, Matt man. said he could, but I don't. <laughs> My wife would probably hate me. Is this co-op? It is yeah. co-op. It is couch co-op, which is why I was saying that theoretically we could do Steam play or Steam couch play where only one of us owns the game and we can all join in and play. Mm. Hmm. Which is okay. a very cool feature of Steam. For those of you that ever want to develop a game, you can make couch co-op in your game for free. Or sorry, not couch co-op. If you make couch co-op a thing in your game, you can make remote play like across the internet done 
was just like a remote play together. Yeah, remote play together. Steam automatically <laughs> hooks you guys together. Like it's <laughs> it's beautiful. But that, that game has been very cool. cool, challenging. We really love making the pizza recipe. Pizza recipe is where it's at. Once you unlock that, it's like I don't want to make anything else. But we did unlock <laughs> <laughs> like dumplings or something next and we have to make dumplings like i mean we or like bun, steam buns or something but it's really cool because not only are you doing like the overcooked stuff but you also get to choose how do i want to set up my kitchen how do i want to set up the dining room mm. you know how do i want to set up literally the office because you get to like buy new things each round and research but things but and... isn't part of like the attraction of overcooked that every single scenario brings it with it a different challenge or is that like a feature of played out played up that's not like the main feature no no, no. i think that is a very good like they're they're both they're similar and different overcooked is amazing because of all of the the variety mm-hmm, and, right. and each level and progressing and trying to but the thing about overcooked is you can almost always progress like Mm -hmm. it's hard to get three stars out of three stars sure but you can keep moving on and beat the game basically relatively simply this game is hardcore the absolute goal is to make it to day 15 Mm. the farthest me and ash have gotten and ash is really good at games is level eight (laughs) out of 15 Yes. You mean the game is hard? It is hard. Uh, I don't it know if a, I had like is... hard games. I didn't play Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. But it, 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 it's fun, though. It's 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 got the same overcooked vibe of being interesting and challenging. It's just like... It's, it's very alluring. I don't know how to describe it. It's got a, it's why. got a, it's got a spice to it. It's got a mystique to it, and something that you're like interested in following. Yeah, I think the thing that I like so much is like I can't wait to figure out what more to unlock. There's mm. more things to unlock. I want to see what the rest of the recipes are. Like I never felt that with Overcooked. I felt like Overcooked was a lot of fun, but I wasn't Short-lived. like, yeah, I was like, oh god, I can't wait to get to this like next thing. Like this one even has like side dishes and stuff, and you have to like mm. serve your people at the same time relatively because if you serve someone at the table too soon uh or sorry if the disparity between how their serving times is they'll just leave they're like we didn't get our food at the same time basically so Mm. screw you you know so it's played it's played up is the grown-up version of overcooked yes Yes, and there's like there's cards every however many days you make it where it'll be like, do you want your place to be a chill atmosphere or do you want it to be like bougie? And then you get That's to decorate cool. it based on that and you get different boons or debuffs based on certain things. Based on that. That's super cool. It, it's 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 great. I I highly recommend it. Um Yeah. Super I think that's cool. been about it for me. Okay. I don't, I don't okay. think I've played many other games. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, what is it me? Yeah. yeah, I haven't been playing any games because I have been back and forth uh, generating the well, not generating. God, I've been writing too much curriculum. Ugh. Um, generating your curriculum. generating AI. Jesus. Uh, no. Yeah, just I have been, to make it. <laughs> I have been putting together the parts list for my gaming PC what? because. Currently, the PC that I have is no no offense. Don't don't do anything no. stupid. I'm don't talking to my computer right me. now. Don't don't no. But um, yeah, just not powerful. Not nearly powerful enough for like the things that I want to do. Which is like there is like a part of me that wants to be able to load up multiple instruments inside of a, a project within Ableton and not have. Sp- severe lag and or crashing experiences because my RAM and or my CPU cannot handle the load. Um, I also, really, I also don't want to have a GPU from the, from the uh, thousand series. I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> like a 1650 super is, was, 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 is, was old five years ago. In terms of technology, 
And it has only gotten worse because, like, I can't, there's literally nothing that I can play right now other than, like, the games that have been made for people who, like, that basically says anybody can play. Like, I can play V Rising because it's made to be played by anyone. I can play Hades 2 because it's been made to play by anyone. I can't even breathe the same air as uh, uh, Armored Core or something like that. You're I, getting like, ready if, to play Star Citizen. No. No, stop! You're you enjoyed delus- it. You're you're delusional. You enjoyed you it. You need help. Anyway. You enjoyed it. <laughs> but I want to be able to look at games and be like, "Oh yeah, that looks fun," and just pick it up and not worry about the fact that like, will my PC even be able to handle it? Like, I picked up No Rest for the Wicked and I have not touched it, and the only reason why is because my PC will literally yeah. flip over and die if I even boot it. Yeah, they haven't done the optimization pass on that one yet either. For so sure like, not. For sure not. Like, guys, it's, it's so bad. Like, I tried to buy Rocksmith um, before they made a major patch and uh, removed um, the ability to buy the game off of Steam so that I could just, like, apparently there's a huge modder, comp, uh, modder community that uh, will add songs from actually, like, current artists and tab them out so that you can learn them within the game, which is cool. And it's a really like unique feature, especially because like I have the equipment to play it like with a fairly well, good sounding uh, tone, but I can't even boot, boot up the game guys. Wow. It crashes my, it blue screens, my computer. Yikes. That's so my 16, 16- Gig, 16 gigabytes of VRAM, 1650 Super. Uh, I don't even remember what CPU is in there. 7950X3D? Uh, is being replaced by a 7950XD 7950, uh, uh, with a 4070Ti Super. Sorry, 4070 Super. 4070 Super. And 32 gigabytes of RAM to be upgraded into 64 next month. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to have any problems with that. Wait, I don't sticks? think I'm going to have any problems. Four sticks. Two sticks for now? Two sticks for now. Four sticks okay. there. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Nice. Yeah, two sticks of thir- 32. Another two sticks of 32. Cool, cool. I'll be yeah. out, man. I'm going to start building probably tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. I have to do some work, honestly, because the deadlines just don't stop. But uh, I plan on building, if not tomorrow, then this weekend, and I might stream it on Sunday. We'll see. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. So I'll put it together. You guys can laugh at how freaking scared I am of, of trying to line up the pins of this freaking GPU because I'm telling, sorry, CPU, because I'm telling you it is the most stressful thing I have ever done whenever I built this PC and had to line up the pins because the fr- when I did it for this one, I bent one of the pins. Oh no. And I had to bend it back into place. <laughs> yeah. And I I went on Reddit and I just I just tried to figure out like what am I supposed to do if one of the pins just won't line up and the the uh, the CP the CPU won't line up and they're like dude you just gotta bend it back into place yeah you just and, use ju- some of that and elbow just pray grease. and just pray for and pray you don't bend it too far the other way and it just breaks off and I was like no. <laughs> <laughs> and then apparently if you do that it introduces oxygen into the uh, the one of the prong and like will cause issues anyway with the C- oh, CPU because no. you've pretty much so yeah. you've pretty much like kind of uh half the life of your GPU sorry your CPU yeah so once you've been to pen it's 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 like, kind of fucked yeah you uh, it's not what it was no. you remind me one of the reasons I used to tell everyone that they should rock climb like everyone should rock climb because Why? I I felt the exact same way that you've described when I built PCs, right? Yeah. And then for, I don't know how long, I was rock climbing. And then Uh I had to build another PC. And I'm holding my motherboard with the tiniest little tip of my fingers. You mean your CPU? No, the whole motherboard, Nat. 
I was dangling a massive thing. I didn't realize what I was doing uh-huh. when I did it. And then I looked and I was like, why am I doing this? Why do so I think stupid. this is okay? And I was like, so stupid. I've been rock climbing for so long now that I have like this weird confidence in my tiniest no. little thing. No. And it was really scary. I was like, this is a no. bad idea. Like, this is scary. No. You telling me that gives me more anxiety on the fact <laughs> that I have to put this all together. That GP, that CPU is so freaking expensive and strong. Holy crap. It is. Is it, this will be. God willing, this will be the only PC that I will have to build for the next 10 years. Oh, yeah. Matt, you want to know something scarier than... Shut up, Eric. Shut up. If you ever go and (laughs) water cool your GPU. No. And you oh, it's an AIO, it. but you mean like a, like a oh, full on like no. like hard line, like putting in a new block on your GPU. You have to take it off and expose everything and re put in uh, like cooling pads and all of that onto your GPU. And you essentially have to break the GPU open to get like the casing off because they, they they've got like all the void warranty on the so GPU. Like, yeah, you're like breaking on the CPU or the GPU GPU nat. You so, got the AIO for your CPU. I yes. think your GPU is going to be cooled on its own. Air cooled. With, with yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. when I had my 1080 Ti, I think it was my 1080 Ti back in one of my old computers. Mm-hmm. I took I it apart it. and put a new block on it and installed that new block. <laughs> and <laughs> I actually ended up, so I had to replace. The, the the water or something like that and one of the screws came loose that's how that car died is that it, the, the water started nah, leaking into dude. the GPU yeah bro I would be yeah. inconsolable be, I remember you fair, like, trying fair, to figure that, out what yeah. the hell was going on yeah it was a very weird problem that presented but yeah, I mean it lasted like four years you know five yeah. years before it did that so it lasted its lifetime essentially okay wait so like what are you playing on now eric because i don't think you ever did you rebuild i think you saw it man huh did you see it i think you saw it you literally saw it it's the laptop i brought to your place no so that's uh, a laptop so so listen listen guys listen guys so you desecrate the house of God. I have a custom built PC. I still have it. I put an old GPU in it, so it's still usable, but it's got like a trash GPU. So it's not really worth playing games or doing anything on, but my GPU and a bunch of other parts broke down in 2020. Mm -hmm. And so to buy new stuff for my computer during that time, cost would have costed me just as much as my laptop but the problem was i needed i wanted a good laptop anyways because my old laptop was having trouble like even doing work so i needed something that i could travel with and do work with and i was like crap and my my computer just died so i need something that can do both things and laptops were cheaper than than buildings because the they're all in because, ones, yeah, yeah. Nobody's using a laptop to mine cryptocurrencies, no. but everybody was using PCs to do 30, that. So 80s, PCs man. were out of the freaking roof, and so <sighs> I was like, I can't buy that. And here's the thing: it was a nightmare to buy something. Yeah, I was actually doing work off of a tablet for the longest time because Dude. I like couldn't get a computer. Net, you couldn't get a computer in 2020. It was Eric. ridiculous. This PC was built during the same time you bought this laptop. Don't talk to me about whether you, you can't paid get an something. Outrageous amount though for that. I that did. PC. I like, did. <laughs> so I joined waiting lists. I was on Dude. text groups. I was on everything to try and get yeah. any of the new GPU laptops, and I ended up lucking into the one that I had. And I was like, I'm just gonna it worst case scenario it becomes my work laptop when i travel and gaming laptop when i travel because it can do everything yeah and at some point i'm gonna get a new pc i just haven't done that yet i've been actually thinking about it it's for time a while man. now so i'm probably gonna get a new pc within the the year ish not probably maybe this year maybe next year 
sometime. Mm-hmm. Um, but I honestly don't know if I'm going to build a computer. Uh, like I've built so many computers that I wouldn't mind it, but I also want something that just looks better than I want to spend the money into for building a computer. So I'm probably going to do something like a Starforge system or, or Star something Forge. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one of those things where it's like, if I build a PC, I'm not going to do what the scary shit Eric mentioned and water cool my GPU personally. No. Cause I, I, uh, if I no. mess up, you know, I'm just going to go all air aspirated, just like an yeah. old classic, <laughs> you know, Porsche or something like that. But it's, it is really cool to have all the water cooling. And like, I know it's, that man. Air, air cooling is like, roughly equivalent Mm -hmm. but what's not equivalent is that the water cooling especially in hot climates will absorb so much of that heat before it goes into your room so it can hold so much more and it's just beautiful you know it's really cool whenever you have the hard lines and everything super cool i was gonna say like if i were to build my own for a next one I would want it. I would want to go all out and do hardline water cooling, but I don't really? want to pay for hardline water. Dude, cooling. hardline guys. I I just said that it's beautiful. I can't. I could it's, never. It's so expensive. I would look over and I would have a panic attack. <laughs> so essentially, <laughs> what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get like Star Forge system or something like that that has, does custom Lee and Lee cases with beautiful graphics. And like really clean and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just gonna do one of those. Is this the it costs like eight hundred dollars more, but like you're paying like five to eight hundred dollars for a really cool look. And yeah. you know, and for the pe- for, for them the to parts. build it. Yeah, is this the Asmund Gold Company or yep, that's, that's yeah. Asmund? It's the Asmund Gold Company. Yeah. So it's the OT, OTK crew. Yeah. Um, which like they've done a lot of reviews on it now, and the it's problems better. that I have seen. Well, even yeah. the, even initially, the problems that I saw were so minor. And as when, it, like you watch some of the reviews and stuff, and they talk about it, and as when, and then we're like, no, we're just gonna we're gonna fix this. Yeah. It was literally like, oh, this is a problem. I didn't know this was a problem. I'm gonna, gonna get fix it fixed. It. And then yeah. they they go through, and the reviews are like, dude, they fixed that problem. So it's like, cool, cool. Can't say see. anything bad, man. Can't say yeah. anything bad. And they and they look dope. Like, and they have custom designs. I'm like, this is. All I, I don't see hardline. What's the price line, tag on that though? They don't do hardline. They yeah. Don't do hard line. What's the price tags on those? Um, so do a like forty seventy super. So if you were to look at their creator editions and look at like their mid range creator edition, you're looking at around the two point eight to three point five grand. <laughs> I'll just build a PC. Thanks. Their forty seventy <laughs> Ti super <laughs> is. Yes, twenty nine hundred for the creator edition. That's obscene. Yeah, it, but there's not even hardline cooling, man. No, they nah, don't do hardline. Dude. There's they cool don't graphics, do but again, I don't know. It's an Intel i forty seven hundred K. Oh, the i t- the Intel yeah, the thirty two gigs like you two terabytes thirty two. Yeah, you're, you're but paying... guys, a hundred more dollars and you have sixty four. Like. The the math isn't mathing. Well, here I'm gonna go. I'm gonna look at the one that's like roughly in the same price range of what you're trying to build, and what they've got is a 4070 Super, 12 gigs, uh-huh. an i5, i3600KF. What the fuck? Not Intel was with not the not comparable to to the freaking 70, 7950, right? I doubt but, it. Yeah, and then they've got a. Uh, I mean, they've got an AIO just like you, yeah, and 32 gigs, yeah, just, just to be clear, though, their overhead, as they've stated multiple it's times, pretty high, is around six to eight hundred dollars. Holy, shit, okay, really, yeah, yeah, you were paying uh, a, six to eight hundred dollars for custom pieces. price thing. Well, it's like their warranty, do they have a warranty? or a warranty, a oh. custom build, and they build it for you. Oh, okay. And I guess Nat, your price doesn't have like the. I don't think the PC part picker had like a installation of Windows in it. Is no, Windows they did not. Free or do you actually have to buy it? You, you actually have to buy, have to buy it, but so we, we won't it's talk about. Crap. We won't. We won't. We won't talk about yeah. buying buying Microsoft. 
Yeah. You know, uh, oh, like, okay. No, sorry. The processor that they have is terrible compared to yours. Boosts up to four point nine, while yours goes to five point seven, and its normal is three point seven. Eat. Yeah. Uh, when Eric told me about this with about the CPU, I was like, "Is it really that much better?" And then I looked at reviews, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. oh, it's, <laughs> it's really that much CPU better. CPU is is that much better, Dude. Like it's it, like it I was telling Anthony before. It's it like two hundred dollars." But it's over double as good, in my opinion. It's not even two hundred dollars, Eric. I picked it up at Micro Center. It was a hundred more dollars. I just oh. dropped the. I dropped. I hey, dropped a set of RAM off, and I was like, "Dude, you're uh, you're give getting it a deal me. then. Like yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got it for four fifty, dude. Yeah. So, so on, on their on... comparable build, by the way, which would be for a similar for the seven thousand eight hundred X three D. Which is not the seventy nine fifty. It's the one that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. The one that you were thinking about building for two grand from them would cost a, about two point six grand, two point yeah. five grand. Okay, yeah. So you're Guys. paying a five hundred dollar fee. You have to okay go to Linus Tech Tips and watch a very recent video that they made where he spends five thousand U.S. dollars at a random Taiwan custom PC builder. Okay, and it is absolutely incredible like you compare the starforge five thousand dollar pc to that and it's like i'm flying to taiwan okay i gotta go and <laughs> like this guy <laughs> d- like the hard line but that, that's, beca- was that's become like a big thing like as i was going through this and looking at all the pc part pickers and stuff i saw that there was like a lot of people who like will do builds within that site and then si- like uh plant their own website of their mm. builds in like to to them so the build that i'm doing is based on another build that's already been advertised as a custom for another company and i was like this is dope like i love the painting of the uh io shielding and everything but i'm not going to pay you like to build this for me i'm gonna take all the parts that you've listed because like i think it's aesthetically freaking dope but i don't think you having like a wrapped wood vinyl sticker on the side is really gonna do it for me to give you five to to eight hundred more dollars i'm sorry yeah that's just a pain in there beautiful though beautiful though dude my first ever pc that I got when I like was still in high school, like 16, 17 years old. This dude, I think Eric knew him named Adam sold me a PC for 500 bucks. He would get a bunch of people. He would build the PCs by hand. They were, they were not sexy. This was a long time ago. Oh yeah. But they were really good for the money. Only 500 bucks, but it was better than Eric's like $2,000 MacBook Pro that he was playing on mm-hmm. at the time. I mean, there's a and lot of things I, that were better I was than the very pros proud. back then. Yeah, <laughs> but I paid an extra 140 bucks. I paid $640 of my summer money that I earned uh-huh. to get that GPU in there. Uh-huh. And for like three months, maybe one, maybe one month, I had a better PC than Eric. And then yeah. he fucking blew you at the water yes, with the 1080 exactly. Ti. <laughs> he, 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 went, he was like, he's like, oh, that's cute. Oh yeah, that, that's cool. And then that's immediately cute. got something better. I was like, uh, it was fun while it lasted. I we would load up a game like like what was I don't know what the game was, but I'd be like, what's your FPS right now? He'd be like seventy two. I'm like, mine's ninety. <laughs> Jesus. So question before I before I wrap the PC thing because I know we've gone on for a little bit. Yeah. Um. My theor- my question now is, do I keep my old PC yes, yes. and use it as a backup, or yes. do I give it to my wife and have well, her she use, it use it if she wants to? Yeah. But you now have you just have a uh, a two comp streaming setup. You can oh. upload all of your stuff to that second computer. Oh. Well, but you don't need to do that. I don't need to because think, your it's, your GPU has can a dedicated encoder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it shouldn't be a problem to do single PC streaming. You you don't need two PC streaming until you're professional. But sure. I could but it's, is it's what so you're saying. Easy to set up that too. Yeah. As long as I'm dividing the load between two PCs, it's doable though. Yeah. And I really don't feel like showing this one 
But it does match the aesthetic because it's going to be white and black. So I'm stoked about it. Nice. But once oh. we become professional, we all have to make our own hardline tubing because then it's modernized. No. No. And it's modern. I'm never going to hardline anything. It'll be a challenge. It's, it's so it'll terrifying. Be the, it'll be the Tab Haven PC building challenge. Who can make it's, the best PC? I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't, I don't want. I feel like I'm gonna lose, and then I'm gonna break everything that I've been sent. I'm no, no, be really there sad. would be ratings. There would be ratings, right? There would be like different, like aesthetic would be one field. You know, Anthony, so you I struggle with getting it to boot. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> it it running is a different category, but it looking good doesn't mean it has to run. So you oh, could get God. top I'm marks and looking good. PC. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get an aquarium and put it inside of a mineral oil PC. Okay, Luke Lafreniere <laughs> from gonna 20 run, years ago. It's going to run so fast. <laughs> 20-year-old idea. Anyway, okay. that's, what I, that's what I've been playing and or doing. Eric, what do you got, man? Oh, oh and man. Uh, don't forget, last time you mentioned Star Citizen, but we didn't get to hear I'm it. Not, I, I did I'm mention not. that. I did mention that. The, um, okay, so let's see. Where do where do I begin? Um, because I didn't even do. I don't think I even talked about my my week yet. No, you didn't. Um, which now I'm blinking on everything that happened this last weekend. You got married. Oh, that's yeah, right. it was your anniversary, yeah, dude. Yeah, it was the anniversary. We did our anniversary stuff yesterday. Me and my wife had our one-year anniversary, which was super fun. Matt, before you got on the other day, so the other day on Instagram, Bon V posts like, <laughs> oh, like a year ago, our wedding festivities started. Mm. And so when Eric was like, yeah, yesterday was our anniversary, I was like, no, that's like tomorrow. <laughs> and And then it was like, Oh no, officially the like wedding festivities started like a day before they got married. I was like, okay, yeah, because like four days before y'all officially got married yeah, was right. when things really started, in That's my why opinion. Really started kicking up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They started like, speeding up. We were doing a lot of we, stuff. We three almost all passed out in a tiny tailor's Bro. room. Yeah. Oh man. I can, yeah. I don't think I've ever gotten so motion slash like claustrophobic, claustrophobic sick in dude. my life as I was when in when I sat inside of that table. So office. rough existence, man. And Ooh, then outside is like the worst part of town. I was like, Ugh. yeah, it's it was so funny. Bombi was like, oh, go here. This is like a very highly reputable place. I go there because it's just me going for the mm. first time yeah, for the first yeah, adventure the there. First and I'm like, Bombi said, go here. I go here. But next door is like adult superstore max but not adult superstore max is more shady like uh -huh. yeah it's not like yeah. it doesn't have the big sign it's got the little sign <laughs> like, yeah, rough. Rough. <laughs> nobody weird, really goes there weird scenario but um but yeah we had our one year cash anniversary. only <laughs> Oof. never a good sign so you had your anniversary sorry yeah that was that was fun and and so i finally i started my journey a life, a, a life journey, one could say, into Elden Ring because the DLC came out. So when I first, I, when Elden Ring first came out, I started playing and I was like, this is cool. And they were like, we're going to do this giant DLC that's like just as big as the normal game. And I was like, fuck this. I don't want to pick this back up in like two years. <laughs> I dropped it. And I was like, when the DLC comes out, I'm going to go through and play everything, 100% the whole game. Okay. And I was like, I, I'm so excited for that. Okay. Because I loved what I played when I played it then. I was like, I'm sold. This was, I love Dark Souls games. I love Dark Souls 2 games. I just don't oftentimes get like the headspace to be able to like start and pick up games. So if they release a DLC, sometimes I just don't get the headspace to be like, I'm going to get back into this world now. So I like okay. to be able to experience it all in one go and then be able to come back to it and do different things later in the future. But like the first experience I like to be like fully through same thing that I did with cyberpunk when they had the DLC, which was a wonderful way to do that, by the way, because initially when it came out, it was bleh, but now it's like really good, but I've been having a ton of, ton of fun with Elden Ring. It is just as amazing as everybody says it is. It, it is. What's your, really uh, what's cool. your build? Oh man! So I think I told Anthony this off stream, but I all my first playthrough, 
I always try to do faith builds in all <laughs> of the Dark Souls and uh, Dark Souls Souls like games. I like the the mix of them and i just like the thematics like paladin-esque type of thing so i tend to try to just make that build work and so far it is popping it is working really well what was Holy your builds like are broken in elden ring from what i've heard yeah dude, what was I your starter so class so i did the the guy that has like the wooden thing around his neck it's the one that starts uh, with the yes. highest faith yes um, I, I can't remember what they're called but yeah they're like the faith people but they're being hung by their neck yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah and i man it, it has been really cool i think i've made it past some of the big bosses that everybody knows i'm probably 30 ish hours into the game now or so so you've already got taken week. care of market yeah dude yeah. You've made it farther than I have them. <laughs> Dude, okay, I will say the coolest experience of mm. the game so far, and I don't know if I just traveled around and got enough stuff because I got pretty set up in my faith build, and then I found a really cool faith weapon, and I was like, okay, I got to get my faith up. So I leveled up a little bit, got, was able to use this faith weapon. And then I am going to um, this place, which I, I don't want to spoil too much, but there is a giant castle in the sky essentially oh, and I know about it. Yeah. it requires a key and it's like uh -huh. hey go find this key and i'm like where the fuck the key be and so <laughs> it gives you a map and i'm like where is this and i go uh, around the entire world because this map is ab whoever drew that map from software you you do not understand <laughs> you you <laughs> don't understand atlases like your cartography <laughs> skills failed well before elementary school. Like, I don't know who you are, but you, you, you screwed up on the Bro, map. Have you seen old maps? <laughs> this is worse. This is no, worse. I'm saying maybe that was on purpose. Maybe. It's very possible. It's very possible. Either way, old maps are nuts. Map, map was infuriating. It was like, look at this. There's an island here. And I'm like, I got to go to the coast and find the island. There's no, no fucking islands. There's no <laughs> islands that's that look actually, like that. That's actually like an interesting skill in itself is that in old maps, and maybe in here, I don't know, I didn't experience it, there will be something that's larger than the rest of the things. And it is larger because that is what was most memorable and important about the thing, which maybe. doesn't help you when you're thinking this is scale. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's not scale. It's there's a really oh. big statue. Look for that. So, you'll be in the right place. So I looked every like I scoured the the world of Elden Ring, going to places to I shouldn't key. have gone at this point in the game to try and find this stupid key. Mm -hmm. And I am finally like, I don't understand this map. I maybe it's not a map of this. And now I'm thinking like fringe shit. I'm like talking like the guy on TikTok that's like, I believe that Antarctica had an underground city and i'm like i don't know if it did but like now i'm questioning like society like i don't know okay let me, let me check random stuff and i stumble and there's a giant rock in front of me and i'm like okay what if what if that rock is it and i go and i walk up to this rock and then the rock looks at me because it's not a fucking rock it's a fucking dragon and the dragon comes up. Is it an arc? Is it the red laser dragon? It's the the blue, the blue, blue dragon, the blue fire dragon. Okay. Nat, I I one shot this dragon like a fucking boss. No, dude, it wasn't even close. Anthony rolled the fuck out of his eyes. <laughs> I it wasn't even close. Nat, this dragon ain't shit. I would, and B was there for it. I have witness to this. I have a witness. This dragon couldn't have, couldn't handle this. Okay. And so I, I just have to explain. I rolled my eyes because I'm not surprised because this guy breaks <laughs> games all the time. Fair enough. Dude, no, like this, this dragon had nothing. Like, I, like, like, I don't know how it worked oh out that I just, like, got every one of its moves. But... 
at one point he was facing away from me and I was like, not today tail. And I like backed up and it swiped by and I was like, that's right. I'm a God. <laughs> this was literally like uh, Eric's MO in Skyrim. He was like, if you get a dagger and then you get this and then you get behind them and you sneak up behind them, you can do times 9,000 damage. And I one shot the d- dragon <laughs> and I'm like, nice. <laughs> Fuck nice. you. Nice. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Dude, I wrecked this dragon. And then I was like, dragon's got to be hiding some treasure, treasure. And I found the key and I was like, there we go. What did this map mean? Because now I found the key. The map still confuses me. Like that's, the thing. you just got to get on TikTok, man, dude. I, I don't know. And what look they up. Were how do I get I in the floating, floating city? Part of the game that you're in has now been just completely just torn asunder at this point so yeah, yeah. I, th- I think the game is super interesting uh i mentioned it earlier because it was like a game that i tried to play on ps5 and then uh i realized i couldn't even stream it because my computer just couldn't handle even taking the feed in from ps5 i don't know if it, I to, i'll figure that out whenever i build the other pc but i was like no i can't do this that and like Margaret just served my ass way too many times. I couldn't, oh, I couldn't man. stomach yeah. the failure. It's it's a very interesting thing because, from what I understand, from seeing posts from developers on Twitter and seeing mm-hmm. other people talk about it, and knowing like playing all the From Software games, and the way they came across and tried to develop the idea of Elden Ring, they are coming from a background where. There's a little bit of open world, but mm-hmm. there's kind of like a set path through the game. There are some branches, but each of those branches really is kind of equivalent in their difficulty scaling. And mm-hmm. then when you have done all those branches, you unlock the next difficulty of branch, right? Okay. And so it kind of really goes to show this kind of linear type of deal. In Elden Ring, I... They really wanted you to explore this lush, beautiful, open world. And I think, and from what I've heard, this this is a pretty good guess from some developer talk and things like that. Although I would say, I don't think anybody's come out and said it. Margaret is your gentle press to say, go explore for a bit. Oh, okay. Because I will say, if you run into a wall with Margaret and you go explore for a while, every time you come back to Margaret, it just gets so much easier. Yeah. And then at some point, you will have explored enough of the world. You'll come down, back to Margaret. So, and Margaret drops like it's nothing. So, a part of me is like, yeah, that's a great idea. But then the other part of me is like, and this you're, is like the, a part of me that I have to I, No, it's not stubbornness. It's, <laughs> it's that. If I can't beat Margit now that I've encountered him in the flow of the game and I can't get past him, then my issue is my skill. The Not- hero. But it, but it, it yeah. It, and so, and here's the thing you can 100% skill through Margit. I believe for sure. that. For sure. It is, it's, it's a hard fight, but you can skill through it. It yeah. isn't the end of the world. But I will tell you if you get your poise to 51 first or get your poise to 101, like there's cutoff points where poise makes a big difference. You get 51 mm-hmm. poise, all of a sudden his light attacks don't press you back or interrupt your attacks. The game changes. Like, yeah. like, like there are points at the game and items and things that you get and skills that you can unlock from the gate. Like you mm-hmm. can go out, explore the world and find skills that solve problems for you. Yeah. That Margaret has. Well, I don't know. There's like a weird thing where it's like I I know when we grew up with World of Warcraft, it was like you can't literally can't win unless you have enough gear. I have to be stronger. I have yeah. to level up. Yeah. There's nothing I can do about it. But now that we're in this age of having actual skill-based games like Sekiro and and, and similar from software games, it's like I no, I could beat them, so I want to beat them. And if mm-hmm. I make myself stronger, 
I feel like I put the training wheels on. Exactly. It's not yeah. the same as World of Warcraft when it's like, you have to be stronger. And here's the thing. You can do that. And this is why I go back to I, my conjecture, essentially, in that Margit is a a way for them to say, this is you can do game. this later if you want. Yeah. I, you don't have to. You can 100% skill through it. Like You can solve the game that way and feel even more epic when you do, right? Like If you push mm -hmm. through Margit with starting gear <laughs> and you beat him, you should feel accomplished. And you will. You'll get rewarded for that. But at the same time, I think that boss was their way of saying, go explore if you want. Rather than forcing you to explore, can because I say something? You Eric? also don't have to explore. Yeah, yeah. I think your analogy is accurate. I just need to change the way that you're ending it. It's not that it's a suggestion to say, "Hey, go explore the world a little." It's that the game is not. You, there is the game is still going even if you can't get past this. There is more to this game than just getting past market. There's more to this that like market is not the gateway for you to continue enjoying the game. Yeah. You can go elsewhere and completely enjoy the game and still progress and then eventually find your way back to market and continue to uh, yeah. investigate the game. So I will take your advice and whenever I'm finished building this PC, I will try Elden Ring once more. Now I will oh. say, here's one thing that is uh, right now, and not everybody has this issue. I wanted to get Elden Ring on my PC with the DLC too. That way I could record some footage because I don't have a capture card right now for my uh, PS5. I do. You do, but I do not. So I wanted to be able to record some of this footage so I could mm -hmm. use it in some of our shorts if we talked about Elden Ring because I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to be like a 200 hour adventure or something like that for me. So it's probably going to be a game that comes up for me for progressively sure. over the next few weeks. So I wanted to be able to record that. The PC version for me is nigh unplayable. Really? Um, essentially, from what I have gathered on my end, there are multiple different issues that people are experiencing. However, for me, the easy anti cheat makes a request uh, every few, uh, every about, uh, I would say, five to seven seconds. And while it's doing that, it seems to bog up a lot of CPU resources, oh. essentially searching for active processes that mm -hmm. it's looking for to make sure that you're not cheating in the online game and stuff like yeah. that. And when that happens, I get a frame skip. And so what uh, happens is my computer runs Elden Ring at 100, or not 100, they max out at 70 frames per second or something like that, I think. It runs at max frames per second on the PC. Well, they, <laughs> they cap it. They cap it. It oh, runs okay. at max frames per second. And then I can actually see the easy anti-cheat with all, uh, like when I'm looking over at my mm -hmm. process lasso and seeing what's using what resources what? on my computer i can mm -hmm. see easy anti-cheat essentially take over a bunch of processes at the same time that my frames per second tanks to like 20 and it starts to chug for a second or two and then goes back to max frames per second and so it's not mm -hmm. my computer my graphics card or anything like that easy anti-cheat is easy literally anti just tanking my frames every so many seconds from what I can tell, there's not much I can do to stop that. Even oh, when right you're playing, I, I tried playing offline, but it doesn't stop easy anti cheat from actually running in the Dude. background. Go it play just... Sea of Thieves <laughs> because that might be what's happening to me in Sea of Thieves. They have easy anti cheat too. And I was telling you the other day where I was like, oh, yeah. Does this game work for me now? No. No. Dude, it, it, like, and, it's it, so bad. Yeah. And so I ended up refunding Elden Rings for the PC. It was. It was literally unplayable. And from what I saw, there were a bunch of people who did a bunch of fixes. I went through for about a two hour dive. Fix it. And Nothing. like for, for for those who don't know, I have like I do debugging for a living. Like like 
I was looking through logs. I was looking through CPU processes. I know easy anti-cheat is like causing my frames to stutter. I don't know exactly what it's doing. I just know that it's opening and searching through processes and files. Annoying. And that's causing my frames to drop. I don't know how to fix that without breaking terms of service or just disabling easy anti-cheat entirely, which would kind of defeat the purpose of uh, playing it on PC, really, uh, mm. at least legally. So, <laughs> so I am playing it on PS5, which has none of the easy anti-cheat because PS5 Let's has go. a hardware uh, anti-cheat, which is ingrained in the PS5 system, and so you don't have to worry about all that. So what you're saying is that I need to play it on the PS5, which I already have it purchased on. So the PS5 a- works for me flawlessly, and it just runs really buttery smooth on there. So I, I've enjoyed the experience on PS5. Um, I already have both of them on there, and if it saves me ninety bucks, I imagine it saves it's, you ninety bucks. Yeah, I imagine at some point maybe they'll fix that because. It, it, easy anti-cheat has so many options. Like if you look at anti-cheat softwares, their conf- config files are tens of thousands of lines long sometimes for some of these games. Wow. And so they can tweak this to their at their leisure to mm-hmm. make it better. They just have to figure out what's going on. What's going on, yeah. And they'll probably do that. But a lot of times what they do, uh, if people don't know, when a game first comes out or they release DLC like that, they actually up the strictness of the anti-cheat for the first few weeks. Makes because sense. those are the times at which people most pirate or try to circumvent these cheat softwares. After that, the player base drops off and they actually make the anti-cheats more lenient to allow for a better experience for the people who have stayed, like, are playing it now. Makes because sense. M- most of that is to prevent piracy. And that's what they care about most. So that's really where they're focused Mm -hmm. because that's their bottom line, right? Like if you can't pirate a game when it first comes out in the first four weeks. I I completely disagree with that shit though. Like a a horrible stance is anti-piracy. Piracy Piracy is almost always a, a, what is it? A symptom of the fact that you aren't pricing things properly regionally or someone is just, they, they don't have money. Oh, no, and I, I and I agree with, with what's, there's like this uh, post the other day where someone was like showing themselves pirating a, a, an indie game and the indie developer responded. He was like, I, this game wouldn't exist if when I was young, I didn't have access to certain things. And I don't believe that cost should ever experience should ever prevent someone from experiencing culture. Agreed. No, no, no. For sure. I don't want to... I'm not saying all this to say that's, like, not the case. I'm saying it more as that is the perception of these big companies in that their decision-making, whether right or wrong, is that if we prevent piracy at the time when it comes out, when hype is at its highest, we have garnered the most amount of money from people who otherwise would choose not to buy it. Yeah, but it has been proven time and time again that statistically they are completely incorrect. And that statistically, when you have a very small percentage of people pirating, you get more sales due to the word of mouth because those people that are playing your game tell their friends that they are playing your game. Because guess what? They had to jump through more hoops to get your game. More hoops. They didn't just go and swipe a credit card that they easily pay off they were like i need to go here i need to do this i don't want to get caught oh my god this was well worth my time i'm gonna go tell all my friends and then all of my friends pay for it for real and so that one pirate got you five sales yeah like no i I entirely agree Uh, i don't think it's the correct decision again i think most of the time especially for this style of game where you can control your online PVP experience, anti-cheat really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And in, in, in almost from a full stance perspective, like I understand they, that like some people really enjoy the PVP of Dark Souls and to take that away is kind of not good. And so you need something. 
But I almost stand by they should do their own automated systems of trying to figure that out rather than an anti-cheat, which almost always diminishes the experience of the game for 99% because of the 1%. And the same thing that you said, a lot of people make super strict anti-cheat rules when the game first comes out for a lot of reasons that don't actually make a lot of sense. And they just that it's a perception rather than the reality and statistics like you have said, have come out proving them incorrect time and time again, but it, it's kind of become a industry standard, unfortunately. And, and it's just like, unfortunate. Yeah. So, and so you have things like Denuvo and easy anti-cheat and all these things and a game comes out and people have performance issues. They have this, that, and this, you know, because you just can't control how those interact with each individual environment because every everybody's PC environment is slightly different. different. Yep. And so, so I, I all that said, I had to. I ended up refunding Elden Ring on the on the PC, not because it's I don't rate it a nine out of ten game, but just because it, my experience on the PC is uh, unplayable for this PC setup Dude, because of I have to know. What were you going to say about Star Citizen? So, oh, there God. was a whole bunch of stuff okay. for Star Citizen that came out because of the new package that was like 60 grand or oh. something like that. So, they, they had a package that you can buy on Star Citizen for 60 grand. So, there's been a lot of interesting arguments and back and forth and all of these things. And being our resident star citizen yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah. How do I feel thoughts? about it? What do I think? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I actually haven't had a chance to say this, but um, so Thor Pirate Software is interesting. When he talks about um, star citizen, he expresses how I felt before I actually le looked into it. I, I would agree with him before playing the game and understanding the game right? This game crept up on me. So I would agree with him that it's like a storefront. It's, it's terrible. It's a scam. No one should buy into this. This is horrible business practice. It looks terrible from the outside. From the mm -hmm. outside, it looks truly terrible. And then over the course of six months, I was occasionally getting served a YouTube video by morphologists. And I would watch it. It was really cool. It was along the lines of uh, watching like a million dollar or billion dollar mansion tour. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's how it got served to me because the YouTube's like, oh, you like gaming? And this is kind of the same thing because he's an architect in real life and he's reviewing the architecture of these ships in the game. I didn't realize that. I thought he was showing us things that don't exist. Concepts. And then one day, like six months in, I was like, wait, this is in game right now? And mind you, what he's going over, because he has the eye for it professionally, is like the level of detail you see in an artisan watch or the level of detail you see in a, you know, hundred million dollar Bugatti or insane Porsche or any sport, any car that you would never buy, but you would admire unless you had fuck you money, Right. And so I've come to realize that this game has a very reasonable $45 entry fee. And then from there, you can go and experience all of these ships. But the people that buy a ship for $1,000, $2,000, $10,000, $60,000, those are the guys that collect the cars, that have 100 cars in their garage, and they admire it. And that is Wales. actually a game itself. Because the level of engineering detail that has gone into this game is insane. Because I'm a dev. I've made video games. I work constantly on d developing crap. I understand how insanely complex it is. And I cannot believe how much level of detail they put into these things. It is... There is nothing I've ever seen that matches it. And it's it's incredible so to me it, it 
it makes sense. There are people that want to support that level of commitment in engineering, just like someone will buy a $10,000 watch that I would never buy. These people are buying a $10,000 feat of engineering that in itself, yes, that is enough. Because just like the guy with the garage, he bought a $100 million car. Does he drive it? No, he looks at it. That's what people do in Star Citizen. They buy that expensive $60,000 package and they admire it. They walk around, they look at it. They don't even take it out for a test drive. They just want to admire that. Wait, is that? That's right there. I can't believe the freaking UI guy or you know the ship designer put that in there. Oh, and if I push this button, it does that. Not only did the freaking artists have to make that work, but then someone had to go and animate it, and then someone had to like it's just beautiful. It's it's an incredible piece of art that will eventually be a video game that we can all enjoy. <laughs> I'm just gonna create a different portion of the podcast that is called the Star Citizen Corner. Where, Star An- where Anthony Swax is poetic about this game because I'm I'm just you don't saying, have to you don't have to explain the only it. way that makes sense. It, but like I I I get it. It is it is your baby. I get no, it. No, I'm I that's sorry. That I, that's not I think it's super interesting though. I it's an interesting point of the game, and I, I think I can narrow down my main problems with the game being a one of direction and marketing in the sense that a few, uh, I think it was a year and a half ago, Anthony might know the exact thing, but they, they sent out a poll. And I think sending out this poll was a terrible idea, in my opinion, for a few reasons. But they sent out a poll that essentially said, hey, do you want us to release the game with X features. I do remember or this. Or do you want us to keep working on this continuously, essentially, like Infinity. as a service game type of deal? Now, in a lot of ways, I think, especially to a, a gamer type of person, you want them to keep working on it forever. You're like, I don't want you to stop working on it. I, I want you to keep making it better. But I think where they went wrong for for me, in the sense that I I want it to be in this state where it's like got a lot of things that I want to do in it and kind of like is a game that's really playable and fun and like has a bunch of different options, which it does have some options now. And if you like those options, they're reasonably enjoyable. There is a gameplay loot to be had as it stands. If you like just doing the missions, getting more money, collecting ships, it's like a ship collection game in, in a lot of ways right now, which is which is cool to some people. I don't bash yeah, that at all. Yeah. If you like that gameplay loop, you you have And there are other there. gameplay loops. It's there just are. they're not um what's the word? Looped into so many other things, right? Yes. There's a bunch of individual loops like mining and salvaging and doing missionary not sorry. Missionary? Mercenary. Mercenary things and bounty hunting and and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. But I think I, but I think I would argue that a lot of those, like their main goal right now, like your your level up essentially from those is that they get you more credits, they get you more cash flow. That greater cash flow allows you to get mm-hmm. cooler ships, and that's kind of your your trophy is well, like and you remind me that things. like because of that right now the people that love the game love it because of the immersion yeah. it is incredible at immersion you can sit down and as long as you're patient and ready to feel like you're in a completely different world you will yeah. like it it's it's that immersive i don't know there's no, other games don't do that they don't make you it's one the biggest thing that that game did when i first played it was broke boundaries there would be things where i'm like I can't do this. You can't do this in any game because there's going to be an invisible wall or you can't interact with that. And it's like, oh, no, you you can. And you're like, what? I can already do that and the game doesn't even isn't even released? And it's just like, and that keeps happening over and over and over again. You're like, this is nice. I'm, I'm not running into invisible walls. I can just do things. Yeah, Thank you. Those, those parts are really cool. And I think my only problem, and, and 
this poll that I was talking about kind of led to a different form of development than kind of where they were headed before this poll to after. And what I've seen since then is kind of this meandering of improving different systems and doing different things that don't that are great things i should argue i'm like, i'm worried that you you're maybe a little out of touch with what's happened so recently because what you're saying sounds very accurate last year no, 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 no. But even even as of the stuff that I've seen from like the newest releases, which they're doing stuff to to release new features, all that's really cool. Well, basically, they're, they finished making the single player game, so all of their devs are actually working on transferring everything to the PTU. Yeah. So they've come out with an insane number of features, and they're about to come out with like four point oh. Yeah. And it'll be even bigger. Which I which will be cool. I just know that I think from a marketing perspective, they need a a, a 1.0 for this state where they go live, essentially, that kind of says we are a product. And I don't know when that'll be, but they aren't. And, Why do and they need that? Because right now, I don't. I don't see the player base for Star Citizen getting bigger. I don't see but them. It is. And they're earning well, more how money. Many, how many players do they have right now? Do you, I don't know. I just know that they keep earning more money. <laughs> and they keep getting more players. So what they're doing is working. And someday, yes, it, they need to fully release it. But like I've like the thing is. The, the, I stick by the first thing I ever said. When I played Sea of Thieves, which was a AAA fully released game, not in beta, it had less for me to do and enjoy than Star Citizen did. And that was two years ago. And Star Citizen has an insane amount of more content since then. So it is already better than Sea of Thieves. And I can say that because in Sea of Thieves, you can lose everything and die at any point in time, and all everything you did was wasted. And guess what? There are bugs that can happen in Star Citizen and make that happen too. <laughs> so yeah. you you might just hit backspace and die all of a sudden because you rebound all your keys. Um I wonder how they're <laughs> how they're getting this. According to this one site, it seems like they have um right around ninety thousand players per day that's insane that's um, a lot <laughs> that is a lot that's a good good number i don't know where they're getting that number another place that is using google data which is based on a few different things their estimation is closer to twenty seven thousand players per day um still hmm. pretty good for an alpha yeah that's a lot I mean, they only do like 100, maybe 120 people per server right now. Yeah. They did have, they did start doing 400 person servers with meshing testing, I think. But I'm not certain. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's an, it's an interesting game for me. It's one where I want to get it to a state where I find it enjoyable to play because there are so many individual things about it that have, like a near infinite potential for me personally. But at the same time, I don't find when I do end up playing it, that the gameplay loop that currently exists in the system, or at least a lot of the individual actions that you end up doing for most of your time don't end up being as enjoyable as I want them to be. Yeah, it would be really nice if they would just like try to focus on a few things to round out that gameplay gameplay loop situation. Like one big one would just be release a couple of uh what is it? There are ships that can board other ships. I can't remember what they call them, but you can literally 
go in, attach yourself to that ship, and then just breach their hull. Okay. That would be amazing because one of the big gameplay loops is people with giant ships buying all of the stuff to go and sell all of the stuff. And you want to be a pirate and steal all the stuff, right? Um, and right now you can be a pirate. It's just not as easy and not as immersive. Like Summit was playing for a couple of weeks the other day uh, and he had a great time. But in the end, he was talking about how it's really difficult for me to, like, tuck on someone's ship. For yeah. me to be a pirate. It's not easy at all. Like, it's, it's, it is, I, the, the scales are skewed. Like, it's so much easier to be successful as a good guy. And as a pirate, it's like, how am I going to make money? Like, yeah. Which essentially just forces you down this one singular gameplay loop if you want to yes. effectively do stuff pretty much the only way to interact with other players in pvp as in pvp modes reliably is to be a bounty hunter or a bounty that bounty hunters come for so either you're a bad guy or you're a good guy and that can be fun but like it's so much more fun when someone's got insane amount of treasure or something on board and you're like look at that rare like armor set that they have i want that i'm gonna take it like no but hopefully more of that comes soon because when when 4.0 releases at the third quarter of this year they're supposed to have perpetually the what is it the the, the bad system not the bad system but you know like the the scary system where there's solar flares that can kill you and stuff and there's like yeah. no security and that's where all the pirates go and and ideally they'll actually have server meshing working because they need server meshing working for that. They literally can't have two uh, different star systems running right now because one server can't handle that much. So they're, they're working on implementing static server meshing right now is the last thing I heard, which means it's not going to dynamically change. It's going to be like this server is handling these planets and this server is handling those planets. And if, you can switch between them and stuff like that. But eventually it's like, oh, you have a hundred person ship and you just reach the cutoff for how many people a server can handle. Well, now two servers are managing the same ship or three or four. And it will be pretty cool technologically if they nice. pull it off, which yeah. they've shown it working rudimentarily, rudimentarily. So we'll see. <laughs> now that Nat wants to uh, disown uh, us and Star Citizen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> you so weren't Nat, bored when we took I off. Do, I do have one one more game that I tried I out. I haven't eaten. It better be good. <laughs> so, it'll be quick. Then we'll wrap up. So, recently, I was looking through Steam, and I found... A weird community post under global agenda. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. So for some reason now it gets early worse. last year. Uh, early last year. Uh, Nat, what are you what are you moaning about? You played just as much global agenda as I did. <laughs> this was you, peak gaming. Eric, if you don't tell him I will. 2010s. So in I found that some reason last year, iRes turned on the servers again for testing, and they never turned them off. So Global Agenda is live again for the first time in years. Now, to but be what fair, he's not telling you, Nat, is that when he was playing this the other day while I was online with him, and he was like, oh, the other guys, they're trying to get a raid together. And I was like, oh, how many people does it take? He's like, 10. And I was like, how many people are online? 11. <laughs> <laughs> the other Currently, 10 people are trying to play. No. I am at the odd man out. <laughs> yes, I was. They were trying to get me. Actually, two people were trying not to play. We're not playing. That's why they wanted me. Um, but yes, there are currently two people online. Two people. Those poor souls. Which is, which is depressing. Those poor Eric's. But, but yeah, it does make me sad. It is one of my 
doppelgangers. All yeah, all ten of, of those people. Games. All Absolutely all ten of those people not. are your doppelganger. Absolutely not. <laughs> Global Agenda was such an amazing game that High Res drove into I, the ground. I rebut this entire discussion. What? <laughs> I Nat, rebut it. Nat, I you have it. so many hours in this game. I do. I do. And I rebut it. You loved this game. Don't I did even, love this don't game. Even, My PC don't could not even run it. Trash I remember. Me. This I, game I was this. so fun. It was... I've, it was I would go so far as to say it is the best thing high res has ever done. And the fact that they have abandoned it and drove it into the ground when they did, when they had tons of people wanting to play this game and they nightmare fueled it with free to play was mm. beyond. This is the worst execution of a game. This and tribes yeah, that were, pretty bad. were driven into the ground. It's ridiculous how close these two developers are to something that is absolute gold and they have done nothing with it. But it was really cool to be able to log in and, and kind of like see your character and like go through a mission and like remember that because it, it really was a special game for me. Nostalgia bomb. Yeah. And here's for the sure. thing. I still think it is one of the best execute. Like it has some of the coolest third person shooter mechanics out of any game that I've played it. This it, for people who don't know global agenda really was the first foray into something like overwatch, which is what I wanted overwatch to be when it came out. And then they, yeah, then they, they bailed. Yeah. <laughs> and like this style of game, people want it. Because Overwatch and the PVE situation for Overwatch and all of that stuff, people want a game like this. For and sure. they, they haven't gotten it. And this was the first one to do anything like it. And it, it was so novel. Hi-Rez is working on another third-person shooter game. I'm hoping that it is anything like this one and they don't drive it into the ground. But knowing their CEO, uh, they probably will. Did they make Tribes? Uh, so they are the ones who are currently handling tribes. Yes. I mean, th it all just screams. Someone's got a big ego and doesn't listen to other input. Oh, it's their CEO. A hundred percent. Their CEO. Uh, uh, like if you go in and read some of the stuff that the CEO of high res has stated, Pretty said, bad. and how he talks to like players, how he presents himself at like conventions I don't know the guy personally, and maybe he, he has a persona that he puts out into the world that is different than his personal life. But at least in the way that he has handled the IPs that he has direct control over, I would feel that he is not handling them correctly. Mm. And yeah. that goes with all of his IPs. Smite could be something wonderful, and it's just... No. Nah. A free-to-play skin grab where they try to sell different packs every month. Paladins was really cool. Some of the best movement in a MOBA style game that has been done in like a shooter style genre. It was amazingly unique. Drove it into the ground. It's barely played. Like everything that high res does ends up as abandonware. And it's just so depressing when you have such great IPs like tribes, global agenda, smite and paladins and all of them are failing, not because of the developers, but because they just stopped poorly doing managed. Them. Yeah. This yeah. is one of those things I was mentioning where it's like, what is it? V Rising lets us host our own servers. Yeah. What if other people making games like this would be like, we're going to make that something possible so that inevitably, when we can't host the servers, yeah. you could choose to. Mr. Asmongold that wants to play with his viewers and has enough people to actually populate it and have a good mm. time and g do like a retro awesome sauce situation. Like, come on. Yeah. So I, I tried some of that. It was, it was super nostalgic and fun and reminded me, uh, I got to play out some of the mechanics and I was, I was able to like prove to myself that, man, I wasn't tripping back in the day. Like some of these mechanics are just so, well implemented and cool and interesting mm -hmm. and there isn't a game besides overwatch really that does anything close and overwatch isn't doing it as well as this 
freaking 20 or 14 year old game. Overwatch is doing the same thing with skin grabbing at this I point. I know. It's just. So. Nice what was the expansion you were telling me about? Oh I mean, yeah, Overwatch weird, came up man. on my page and it was like super over the top world two Overwatch, or something. Whatever. It I was saw that too. Super yeah, it was Mega weird. Ultra Watch. Yeah, Super Mega Ultra Watch. Like, what are we doing? Super Blizzard? Mega Ultra Watch. Oh my gosh. Well, are on they... that somber <laughs> note. <laughs> <sighs> We will catch you on the next one. We will see you in the next one. Hopefully with lighter topics and more fun and more whiskey. And hopefully we'll have some more Frey Ranch to to kind of talk about. And For sure. Frey Real. For, oh. Great whiskey. Oh, Signing off, y'all. Good night. Bye. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. Bye.